Amen. Well, it's always wonderful to have uh, Brother Horn back, back with us. And, um, you know, some people uh, are just a blessing and a help to you. And uh, the people that are with you early on, I think they, they make the biggest uh, imprint in your life. And um, uh, Brother John spent many, 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 many days uh, working with mom's husband or Lori's dad, uh, an unsaved man, and working and working and working with him and many, many days, and he finally got saved. And, and um, you know, uh, that was probably the hardest thing is when he was slipping away to heaven and Lori was going up there every day, but to know he was saved made all the difference. And uh, so praise the Lord for that. Um, Brother Hornbeck was my first Sunday school teacher as a Christian. And um, he taught the Genesis class or the newcomers class and uh, would visit me every Saturday. And, um, you know, I'd be at, at home with no shoes and no shirt, and no, you know, just, hey, Brother Hornbeck. And, um, but I had all my questions. And he, if you ever remember me telling the story about church being outside, and uh, he's the guy I asked about it because my best friend said he wasn't going to come to church because he read the Bible where church is supposed to be outside. So I never read that, but he was my best friend, and why would he lie to me? And uh, so Brother Hornbeck, I had my list of questions, and he came by to just talk to me about the Lord and if I had any questions. And one of my big questions was, why are we having church inside? Because the Bible clearly says it's supposed to be outside, because my best friend Glenn said so. And... Uh, so I asked him that question, and I'll never forget his face. He looked at me, and he said, he always had this laugh, and he laughed at me, and he's laughing with me, right? And uh, he said, Brother Connor, I've, I've read the Bible many, many times all the way through, and I've never read that. And here's what I thought. I thought, here's this guy coming to teach me the Bible, and he doesn't even know it. <laughs> but uh, praise the Lord for Brother Hornbeck, his patience. Uh, you know, working not only with uh, 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 Lori's dad, but my dad. And, um, you know, my dad eventually got saved. And, and so Brother Hornbeck put a lot of hours in my family and in me and I praise the Lord for him. Now I've been on the mission field. I've known him almost 40 years now. Uh, only old people say stuff like that, but I've known, I, I met him when I first got saved, so I've known him almost 40 years now and I praise the Lord. Uh, he's just been faithful, faithful to the Lord. And uh, these last uh, few years, he's worked with Brother War in, uh, in Italy and so uh, God's been really good. So but I'll let him share uh, maybe some of what God's been doing over the years and, and, um, and as he comes to preach. So let's pray. Father, we sure love you. God, thank you for Brother John and, uh, Lord, his uh, faithfulness to you. And, Lord, we just pray to you bless our, our time together tonight uh, as we uh, are encouraged from your work and what you do and how you've uh, chosen him to do a special work in people's lives. And Lord, as he opens word of God and preaches, God, that you would uh, fill him with thy spirit, fill us, that we would hear uh, from thee tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Love you. Appreciate it. Love you, too. Take your Bibles. Turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, I really appreciate Brother Connors. I, I, I'm in a joking mood, but I better get out of that. <laughs> uh, we just talking. I remember the first time he came to uh, <laughs> Independent Baptist Church. Uh, I'm not sure what he shared with you, but he was different at that time. But, but all that's to say that is this. God will save anybody, any place, anywhere, anytime. And God would then work in their lives and take them to where God wants them to be. And that is that man there. He was always willing to do whatever God said. 
Uh, Brother Rick Dove told me, he was always saying, what's next? What's next? What's next? But that's the way the child of God ought to be, amen? Uh, we don't always think that, but in truth, it really is. And I'll show that to you. I'm going to put what I've been doing into my sermon. But so I want to read our scripture first. If you take your Bibles, and I'm, I'm thinking you would do what I do, uh, stand for the reading of God's word. I love responsive reading, but we're only read two verses tonight. So I'd like for us to read them in unison. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. We'll read that together, okay? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledges him, and he shall direct thy path. I've entitled the sermon, Trust Him. Trust Him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Uh, the truth is, each of us in our own lives can think of how you've blessed us. We can go back to the time when we've trusted you as our Savior, and thank you for your working in our lives. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the pastor here. Father, help us to focus on you tonight. Let us be what you would have us be. And Holy Spirit, you know my desires, and so I ask that you'll help me to Share with them what you've shared with me. I pray that Christ be honored and glorified. And I pray this in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. Uh, back in 1985, I was talking to Dr. Creed. He wasn't doctor then. Well, I don't think it was. He might have been. About going to the mission field. And we determined that uh, well, I was going to work with military. And I ought to go to Aviano Italy and stay. Day. By the way, how many are in the military here tonight? None of them. What's happened to Pata? Well, okay, everything's used to be. But anyway, uh, I got off track. It's called a senior moment. <laughs> uh, but we're talking about going and staying. Because if you stay, God can bless now, I realize the military is to come and go, but if I stay there, we'll go. God will bless that longevity and work at it. And so we went to Aviano, Italy. Uh, our goal was to go and stay. But we're almost six years there, and God, circumstances, was trying to force me to leave. I didn't want to leave. Uh, but the circumstances were working that way. And the truth is, I was starting to be rebellious. <laughs> I was trying to be, I'm not leaving. I'm not moving. I, I promised Dr. Creed that I was going to stay here, and I honor my pastor. I love my pastor. I honor him. He's my pastor. He's my, still my leader, my spiritual leader. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, God would not give me peace. So I went ahead and... We left Aviano Italy. To this day, I don't know why. Uh, I just assume things, but I don't really know why. But we went to Panama, was down there for four years. Two years, I assisted Dr. Al Sly. Then God took us and put us in there for two years. And then he was the base. And I had to pray and find out. Uh, Mannheim, Germany, worked with Dr. Tom Lancaster. And God really began to bless. While we're working with them, I got the chance to work in discipleship, like what I've done. We had a Bible Institute. I oversaw that. I was in charge of the church program. And God opened a jail ministry. It was only military, and they called it a confinement center. And we've seen a lot of conf men get saved, but we've seen a lot of men surrender to serve God full time. Also, at that point in time, God began to use our church to start churches. Uh, we, uh, God allowed us to start four churches, one in Hi uh, Lighthouse Baptist Church in Heidelberg. Uh, we went to Bamberg. We went to uh, uh, Milligan, Germany. We went to Wiesbaden. God started these churches, and they're military churches. And the thing about that, it's not unusual for God to call a young person to serve him full time. Matter of fact, in Lighthouse Baptist Church, there was a man, I was on his ordination council. 
uh, senior enlisted, when he got out of the army, God called him to be a director of a military work in, uh, in the Tidewater area, and he is seeing men go to the mission to start churches for the military. <laughs> All the blessings that God is doing is blessings to you. But the thought is what I want you to leave with. Trust him, is remember? I didn't want to trust him, but God helped me to trust him. If I had not gone with what he wanted me to do, I could have stayed there in Aviano, but what you see on the board back there wouldn't have happened. I was talking to a lady last night on the phone that I have discipled, and I'll tell you more about her later. She doesn't know if she's ever been saved. Her husband don't know if he ever been saved. I was a family uh, also last night that's just, uh, that I'd worked with in Germany, and they, you know, they didn't know what would have ever happened. The truth of the matter is, we need to trust God, amen? We don't know what God wants, but the truth is we need to trust him. How many have been in the military, even though you haven't, okay? What, how do you get ahead in the military? Follow orders, amen? In other words, obey. If you just obey, you get ahead. How many of your parents have children? What do you want your children to do? Obey, obey amen? If they obey, you, you bless them and everything else, right? What do you think God wants us to do? Trust him, obey. The truth of the Christian life is obedience. It's really a simple thing. I am not a talented individual, but I know how to follow the Lord. Amen? Because why? The Holy Spirit directs you. Here's our instruction book. So that's all we need. I went back to it. We, we had 25 years in the mission field. Came home in 2012, and God allowed me to be a part of the military section of BMI called ARM, Assist and Relieve. So we went back, I went back in Germany in 2015 to help start uh, Wiesbaden Baptist Church. It's going strong. I came home, got my wife, and then we moved to Aviano, Italy to work with Pastor Chris War. And he says, hello. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I started working with him, and God really blessed there. Uh, I didn't really get to see all I wanted to do, but I really got to build a good relationship with Pastor War. In 2019, I came home to be with churches. We had been on the mission field for 30 years. Uh, I came home to be with supporting churches that long. And I got, we went back to Italy, and then I went to, rode to Spain for six months. That was a dream. I, I tell you, it was a really exciting work with the Spanish work. They had a Spanish work in there. Uh, and then I but was there six months and already told Pastor War I'd go uh, back with him, uh, fill in him because he was going to go home in January for six weeks. But COVID hit. Instead of being six weeks, it was five and a half months. But the truth was, that was a real blessing. It didn't seem like it, but it was a real blessing. God did a lot of great things, but the, one of the biggest things is the pictures back there. An Italian man came to me and said, Brother Hornbeck, would you like to rent our garage? It was an automotive garage. Pastor Warren and I have been praying for five years for something to open up. And God opened the place up. But it's, that's just the beginning. The, not only did he open that up, but he opened a door to, into some Italian hearts. Amen. I see. It, they had, he gave a book called Done in Italian to these people. And one of the ladies came came back and says, how do I receive the gift? And so some people think she's gotten saved. It's hard to know, but it's opening up. Pastor's getting more influence. In, I say pastor, Pastor War is getting more influence into Italians. And so we want you to pray for that. Amen. Once I left Italy the first time, Panama, they had worked with the Panamanians. When I went to Germany, we had 
always Germans in our service. They needed to be reached. Now we're in Italy, and we want to see the Italian reach. The Italian needs the gospel as much as anybody else. So the truth of it is, we, we, rest, we, we request that you pray that God will send somebody to work with the Italian people. Uh, there was a man by the name of Renato. Any Spanish people here? Renato means born again. That's literally what it means in Italian. And so I said, Renato, eh, Renato? And so I said, Renato, are you born again? <laughs> and it, he didn't know what I was saying, but guess what? It opened the door to start witnessing to him. So we're, we're praying that eventually he gets saved. But I said all that to say this. It takes obedience. Amen? Trust him. Today, we are in troubled times. How many understand that? Right. Today, we need to trust him. But we're not trusting him. We're looking to other things. We get nervous, but we get sidetracked. I can't say everybody, but, you know, but we do. We're human. But my thought is this. Who is him? If I, if I ask people, trust him, who's him? It could be Buddha. It could be Muhammad. How many understand what I'm saying? Who's him? Well, we can say he is God. You with me? But I'd ask you, is that small g or big g? Amen? But who's, who it is? Did you know that Jesus Christ asked his disciples who the people say I am? And then he says to to the disciples, who do you say that I am? <laughs> I like this. Peter says this. Simon Peter answers and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. I don't know about you, but I like that phrase. He didn't say you're the son of God. He you said you're the son of the living God. Because why? Our God is living. He's alive. He's forever. And we need to understand we can come to him and we can trust him. So he is who? Christ, the Son of the God. Or we could say he's God the Son. Amen? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and the name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. But let me go back. This. For unto us what? A child is born. That's the virgin birth. Unto us a son is given. That's the incarnation of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Amen? I don't know about you, but that excites me. But there's another phrase in there. Because he calls him the mighty God. Because that's who he really is. We need to trust him. Who? He's the mighty God or God Almighty. In Revelation, he's called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We should not be fearful. Amen? if our faith is in trust in the Jesus Christ, because that's who he is. But sometimes we do get nervous. Sometimes we do get afraid. You have ever been there? You know what I do? I sing. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of kings is he, the Lord of lords supreme through all eternity. The great I am, the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? I, I keep on going, because why? Man, <laughs> God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he's given us a power and love and a sound mind. So what we need to do is focus our attention on Jesus Christ. I think about that. I, I, Psalm, or Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Then in verse 3 it says, Consider him. So what we really need to do is we need to look to Jesus all the time and consider him. Amen? And if we look at him and consider him, we can't help but be excited about who he is. Because why? He's the son of the living God, or he is almighty God. Amen. Now, So we need to trust him. Now, think about this. The word trust. You know the word for another trust? Confidence. Amen? 
We need to have confidence in him. Question number one, who is him? It says trust in the Lord. Does it not say that? Or we need to have confidence in the Lord. In context, that's talking about Jehovah God. That was the Old Testament. But we're in the New Testament. So who's him? Jesus Christ, amen? But the truth of the matter is, Jesus Christ, is the Father, one and the same. John chapter 30, I think it's verse, John chapter 10, verse 30 says, I and the Father are one. So the, twice, the thing of it is, we need to have confidence in him. Jesus Christ does not change. He says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I am the Lord. I change not. In Hebrews 13, 8, he says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he does not change, we can always have confidence. How many understand that? God doesn't change, young people. He's always the same. We're in a changing world. We're in a world where everything's changing. Everything's changing. What was right when I was a kid is now wrong in many cases. And what's wrong is now right. And, but God, no, no, he never changes. We can always have confidence in him. We can focus on him, and we know we're right in him because he does not change. But did you, let me share another thought with you on that. Not only, how do we know about Jesus Christ? Now, I enjoy walking at night. I like Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day and a day utter speech, night and a night showeth knowledge. But how many understand that is a limited amount of information? So, where do we get the information about Jesus Christ? How about the Word of God? Amen? <laughs> Think about this. 1 Peter 1, 23. How many are saved? How many born again? Listen to this verse. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Here it is. By the Word of God that what? Liveth and abideth for how long? Forever. I mean, listen, that's an exciting thing because the word of God, which we is considered not corruptible, we are born by the word of God. In Psalms 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalms 119, verse 89, or see, I just quoted that. Psalms 100, verse 5, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endureth to all generations. I saw this today in my reading, and I put this one in here. Psalms 12, verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. You know what that, you know what that's exciting about that? This book that we have, that we use, is preserved. It's God's yeah. word. It's alive. You cannot have, if you don't use this book, you can't have the Word of God. If you don't have this book, you can't really learn about Jesus Christ the way. But I'm going to share another thought with you. There is a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Word of God that we need to understand. Go with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And then we're going to go to 1 John chapter 1. I want you to see what it says. In the beginning was who? Or was what? The Word. You know what that is? The Word. But what else does it say? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what it says. Is that, is that what it says? Okay. Can I trust it? Okay. Look at verse 14. And the Word, that's this one, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. Go with me to John. 1 John chapter 1. Uh, John puts it this way, and I like it. It's going to say the same thing, but a little bit differently. 
Notice what's that which is from the beginning. What's, what was from the beginning? <laughs> the start of things, amen? The beginning of creation. We have, that which is from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our high, and hands have handled, of what? The word of life. Amen. For the life was manifest and we've seen it and bear witness and shown to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest in us. Now look at this. Look at what it says now in verse 3. We have seen and heard what that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and who? With his Son, Jesus Christ. Truth. You cannot separate the Word of God and Jesus Christ. It's an impossibility because the Word was made flesh. Jesus Christ and the Bible are one. Folks, I don't understand it. But I believe it, because that's what the Bible teaches me. If you're wrong with the Bible, you're wrong with Jesus Christ. If you're wrong with Jesus Christ, you're wrong with the Bible, because you cannot separate them. You and I need to understand it's important. We, Jesus Christ is the living God. The Word of God is the living truth, and we cannot separate them. And you and I need to have that relationship. If we're going to trust Him, we need to trust His Word. We need to trust Jesus Christ, and you can't separate the two. It's important today, if we're going to have the confidence that we need to have, we have it in Him and His Word. Amen. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. John 17, 17, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So the truth is what? We need to have confidence in Jesus Christ. And we need to have confidence in this book. Amen? Amen. Now, It's not about us. It's not about them. It's not about you or me. It's all about him. Oh, the next time you're feeling prideful, remember pride's a sin. It's not about us. It's all about him. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about who you are or what you can do. It's all about serving the Lord, seeking his face, praising him for his mercy and grace. It's not us. It's all about him. When you finally see it's not about you, then you will find what Jesus Christ can do. He might call you to preach or to a foreign field. It's amazing what God will do if you will just yield. It's not us. It's all about him. It's not about us. It's not about them. It's not about you or me. It's all about him. Oh, the next time you're feeling prideful, remember pride's a sin. It's not about us. It's all about him. It's not about us. It's all about him. It's not about us. It's all about him. If we can get that straight, folks, everything in this life needs to center around Jesus Christ. And so as we come back to the text, what's the first thing it tells us to do? Trust him. Amen? So what's the next thought? With all thine heart. That three-letter word is really a powerful word because it means all. There's no exceptions. There cannot be any reservations. It must be holy without exception. And let me underscore this, both moral and spiritual. Listen, moral and spiritual. It's not uncommon. I've been, I was guilty of this. I raised my children morally according to the word of God. I told them, this is what you do. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you honor your, you, I taught him, brother, I taught him morally, correct? I taught him how to go to church and what to do. But the truth of the matter is, I didn't teach him spiritually. 
I didn't teach them how to walk with God. I didn't teach them how to spend time with God. I didn't really teach them how to put God first. But the truth is, when it says all, how do I understand? It means all. And we need to get on track. It's not... <laughs> how many of you have children that you've tossed in the air? I have. Uh, I remember, I think it was Michelle, my second daughter. I said, Michelle, do you trust Daddy? Yeah. If I throw you up in the air, will you, will you uh, let me throw you up there, and I'll guarantee I'll catch you. She said, okay, I'll do that. So I threw her up in the air, and she went. <laughs> she grabbed my neck. <laughs> what does that say? She didn't trust. <laughs> but, but Sherry, my oldest daughter, I say, Sherry, you, you trust Daddy? Sure. Come Daddy through in the air and catch it? Yes. So you know what I did? I threw her up in the air, and she had a good time, and I caught her. <laughs> How many understand that's confidence? That's trust. And that's what God wants us to understand. We need to completely trust him. We need to completely have confidence in him. Not part. It's all. It's not Jesus Christ plus. It's Jesus Christ only. Amen? We went to the consulate in Washington, D.C. I heard a lot about missionaries having a hard time getting visas. And so I went to Washington, D.C. three years before we went, and I filled out the paperwork at the consulate, and the lady there looks over the paperwork. Everything was in order. She says, there's one problem. You're too early. She come back about a month, maybe a little bit more before you go, and we'll, we'll approve it. I said, okay. But I kept hearing these horror stories from other missionaries about the problems they're having at the consulate. So two years out, I went again. <laughs> there was a different lady, but the forms were the same. I filled them all out. She says, everything's okay, but there's one problem. You're too early. So I said, okay. Uh, everything seems to go fine. So I think it, I was a month and a half out. I'm not sure what it was. Fill all, same paperwork, but a different lady. Guess what? Problems. Not what I wanted. No problems. She, she says, do you know anybody in Italy? I said, no. Do you know where you're going to live in Italy? No. Do you know they want you in Italy? I said, no. Why are you going to Italy? Because God wants me to go to Italy. <laughs> uh, and she tried to get me through all a bunch of hoops, and she wasn't going to do it. She was, but I said this. I applied twice before, and each one of them said it was fine. Everything's okay. Now, I did the same thing with you, and you say it's not working? She changed her tune. Here's what she did. She says, because you don't know anybody in Italy, you don't know where you're going to live, they, you don't know if they want you or not, I'm only going to give you a six-month visa. Normally it's a year. You would think she would give me something longer, wouldn't you? I thought so. But she said, I'm going to give you six months. And if you don't get a church going in six months, you've got to leave. Well, I knew God wanted me there. We got there last of March, so that means April, May, June. That's happening. July, August, September. I had to have something by September. We got there, couldn't find any place to live. Looked, uh, April, May, no, nothing. I couldn't. I just thought, well, I'm going to force God. How many of you don't force God anything? But I said, I'm going to keep winning people to Jesus Christ. I'm going to force. It didn't work. When it was ready, the first part of June, I found a house. Now, it was 25 miles from the base, but I found a house. <laughs> but no furniture. Two weeks later, our furniture came. Praise the Lord. It's, they told me it was only going to take four weeks, but it was already the middle of June. So I was praising God. I did something I should not have done. It was already April, May, June, three months. I haven't got a church started yet. July 16th, we started church. We had 15 people come to church. That night, my family, 
my wife and my son John, and Jay Houghton came. They're the only ones. And Jay Houghton got saved. <laughs> Guess what? We had a church started. <laughs> God's going to do what he's going to do, amen? We just got to what? Trust him with all our heart, no reservations. Now, so what's the first thing we're supposed to do? Trust the Lord. Secondly, and the third phrase, and lean not to thine own understanding. In other words, we don't do things our way. We do things God's way. Why? Isaiah 55, verse 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. What people need to see today, people know a child of God is different. Amen? What they need to see, a child of God living in such a way that God gets glorified. Amen? They really need to see it because why? They know a real child of God depends upon God. Now, I thought about that. So what's my first thought? Number one, trust in the Lord. Second thought, all your heart. Third thought, lean not down on the Fourth thought, in all thy ways acknowledge him. You know what that says? Everything I do, I need to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him is what? Lord, what should I do? That's what it says. Now, what I do, and I've heard learned this in school, I, here's what I do. I get up in the morning, and I'll say, good morning, Heavenly Father. Good morning, Lord Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And I thank him for the good night's sleep I had. I have sleeping problems, so I thank him for what I get. <laughs> and I ask for directions for the day. I get up, go to my Bible reading. You know what I do? Get down on my knees and ask God for directions. I ask the Holy Spirit for enlightenment. When I get up from my knees, I go and pray. If you were to come up to me and say, Brother Hornback, I got a question. You know what I would do? Instantly, I'll say, Holy Spirit, I need some wisdom and understanding. Everything I do, I need to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him, ask him what I, what I need to do. Ask him his for directions. Why? Because I don't know what he wants me to do. I don't know what God wants. How many understand? I don't know what God wants for you. I need his direction. What God wants us to do in all our ways, acknowledge him. Now, I'll give you a thought on that. We cannot get God's results and if we do it God's way. There was a man, his name was Scott Gray. Brother Williams, uh, this is where we're in Mannheim, They're, this is all army. Uh, Brother Williams invited uh, Scott and two single fellows. Scott was married. And so on Thursday night, we went visiting. We went to the singles first because singles are hard to catch, and we didn't catch them. <laughs> so we went to Scott's house, and Scott invited us in. His wife was in Mexico because she was with her mother. And so I, we prayed. We always ask God for directions as we pray, as we go. And we were in the house, and I, we got it. I said, Scott, let me ask you a question. Do you know for sure if you died right out, you go to heaven? He said, sure. I said, tell me. What happened? Honestly, I don't remember because that's so long ago. But he gave me something, something about works. And the Holy Spirit gave me a verse of Scripture. And I'll use Titus 3, 5. Now, going back and forth, and the Holy Spirit gave me verses to help him to understand. Because I didn't want it to be my saying. I want him to see what God had to say. And so finally he says, I guess I need to get saved. So he prayed. He bowed his head, prayed to receive Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I was excited about it. Amen? Yeah. And this was on Thursday, and I have a discipleship class. It was called basic training when, we were, when you went through it. But no, it's called Genesis class, but we called it basic training because that's military terms. And I went back on Saturday and knocked on the door. Scott came to the door. Boy, he let me have it. I determined he didn't get saved. He prayed to get rid of us. And I was really sad. I went away, Brother Connor, I was really sad. And I, I went and I, I asked the Holy Spirit, what did I do wrong? I prayed, asking for direction. I prayed, I thought he gave me the scriptures. I prayed, what did I do? 
I couldn't, I couldn't figure out anything. I think a day or two later, the Holy Spirit said, you need to go back and apologize. I said, why? What did I do? I followed your instructions. What do I do? I mean, why? How many understand what God says, the Holy Spirit says is right? I don't have to understand, right? I just need to do what he says. Truth. I finally followed my pride. <laughs> I asked God to forgive me. And I went back, and it took me two weeks to catch Scott. Scott was coming out of the building, and I talked to Scott. I said, Scott, and I could tell he didn't want to see me. Uh, you know, he gave me a blast at the door. What's he thinking? I, so I said, Scott, I need to apologize. I, need, I didn't mean to manipulate you to get you to pray. Uh, he says, okay. It was either two or three weeks later. Guess who was in church? This time he had his wife. <laughs> it's not uncommon at Rhine River that people would walk the aisle. I walked it. And a man came, and Dr. Lancaster told me to take him aside and deal with him about salvation, so I did. And then I talked to him about baptism, and he said he was going to get baptized. And so I took him over to get baptized. I went back in the back for him to get baptized. Guess who was in the back? Scott. <laughs> he got saved that morning. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I don't know what the Holy Spirit was trying to do. But I was trying to acknowledge him, amen? And if I just will follow him and let trust him, he knows what he's got to do, and he'll do it in his own way. But now Scott's got saved. And they're, they're still, <laughs> I don't know how many years that's been, but I was talking to his wife the other day. If I had stayed in Italy and not go on, they wouldn't have gotten saved. Scott wouldn't have gotten saved. So many people would have gotten saved. It's so important to listen and acknowledge him, the Holy Spirit, in everything we do. How many understand what I'm saying? We can't have God's blessings or directions unless we do it. So what's the first thing I need to do? Trust him. Second thing, with all the heart. Third thing, fourth thing, acknowledge him. And we'll guess what happens. He'll direct our path. How many want God to direct your path? How many of you want God's blessings in your life? You're going to have to stay with this book and keep Jesus Christ in the right place. Because it says, trust him. You can't have what God wants you to have unless you trust him. You can't have what God wants you to have unless you do with all your heart. You can't have what God wants you to have unless you le don't lean to your own understanding. You can't have what God wants you to have unless you acknowledge him in all his ways. Amen? Question. Those of you raised your hand. Do you trust him? Do you have confidence in him and his word? Do you, with all your heart, not part, all? Do you lean to your understandings or do you always trust him? Do you always acknowledge him? I don't know where you are, but the truth of the matter is we need to trust him. I want God's blessings, and I have found through experience, it's really simple. All I have to do is trust him and follow orders. It's, it sounds complicated. No, it is not complicated. It's really simple. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want you to think through the sermon. The truth is you can't trust him if you're not born again. If you don't really know him as your savior. And I would imagine, how many would say, Brother Hornbeck, I know without a doubt I'm saved. There's no doubt in my mind. I've trusted Jesus Christ as my savior. Okay. 
Thank you. Put your hands down. That seemed like every hand, but I'm not going to go further than that. You know, the truth is, if you're not saved, you know it. And you really can't have God's blessings unless you get saved. But at the same time, those of you who say you're saved, you really can't have God's blessings unless you have confidence in him and you trust him with all your heart. I know sometimes we have difficulties, but he understands it, but we, he wants us to trust him. You're here. Do you trust him? Do you really trust him? Young people, you've got a lot of life ahead of you. Do you really trust him? Learn to trust him with all your heart. And then learn to do it God's way, not your way. But ask him for directions. Ask him how he wants things done so that you can be what God wants you to be. Brother Connors. All right, let's all stand. And why don't you come as God's uh, dealt with your heart? Why don't you just let him have his way? And Trust him tonight. Why don't you come?